Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. I'm Gail Kennard and I'm a Katiba at the Women's Mosque of America. I often reflect on the story of Queen of Sheba. She was the ruler of a very wealthy nation where Suleiman, Solomon, uh, Solomon lived, not very far from her. He discovered her kingdom, which was actually more wealthy than his was. And he learned, and we learned this from actually from the Quran and the story that's told, that Shaitan had deceived the people of the Queen of Sheba about the reality of Allah, the one God. This story has many lessons for us today. First, the Queen of Sheba was the head of her nation. The Quran gives us this example of a female head of state. Her story shows us that nothing should preclude women from being in leadership roles. Nothing, period. So women can be heads of state. They can be heads of anything. Another lesson is how the Queen of Sheba handled decision-making. Suleiman or Solomon sends her a letter explaining the religion of Islam. She immediately asked for her circle of chiefs, her advisors, and she wants them to give her their opinion about this letter. She engages in consultation with others before she decides what, what decision to make. So she's not like, well, I'm the queen, you know, um, you just do what I say. No, she brings in other people and she asks for their input. Finally, and this is a really important lesson, she acknowledges when she's wrong. New information about the nature of God was given to her, and she immediately saw that it was better than what she had. Again, she didn't say, oh, we've been doing this forever. What our ancestors were doing is just fine. You know, we don't need this new stuff. In the Quranic story, the queen accepts Islam even before she goes to see Suleiman or Solomon. She understands that although she may have great material wealth, that Solomon has the belief in one true God, and this is much more valuable than her wealth. I'm really inspired by this woman, especially as a leader. She's calm, she's cool, she thinks through things, she doesn't, doesn't do things on, on impulse. Spiritually, the Quranic story teaches us that the queen accepted the deen, the religion of Islam. Even though oftentimes we're presented with this story that seems that she submitted to Solomon, to Suleiman. But the Quran is very clear. She submitted to the belief in one God, not to Solomon. The queen speaks in the Quran, Surah 27, Ayat 44. She's speaking directly. She says, oh, my Lord, meaning, oh, Allah, I have indeed wronged my soul. I do now submit in Islam with Solomon, Suleiman, to the Lord of the worlds, Rabbil Alameen. Indeed, a great lesson for all of us.